Hey, hey everyone, Aaron here with a fresh new video and today I'm going to be reviewing the Bose L1 Pro 32 with the Sub 2 base. <laughs> All right, first thing before I jump into the review, a little bit about myself, if this is your first time to my channel, I am primarily a wedding DJ. What you're going to hear is a review of the product, and at the end of the video, I'll tell you what I think of it from that perspective. If you're not interested in that perspective, then bye. So Bose finally did an upgrade to their PA speaker systems. They released the L1 Pro 8, which has eight speakers. They released the 16, which has 16, and then the 32, the beast, which is behind me, which has 32 speakers in it. Mind blowing how many speakers they put into this thing. And at some point you wonder if during the production they're like, come on, let's push it, let's go more. Like we got 20 more. One of the first questions I get is, you know, how tall is it? When you set it up completely, it gets up to seven feet tall and the tower does split into half. So you, they come apart and then they both go into bags. The two speakers sit on top of the base, which also has a built in three channel digital mixer which again is a huge upgrade for the L1 system. It also includes Bluetooth. You can hook up your tone match through that ethernet cable. Channel one and channel two are both XLR quarter inch combo jacks. The nice thing about this now is that the mixer is completely digital. And as a result of that, you can use their app, which they have totally designed for these new systems. The app connects to the PA through Bluetooth and you're able to control all the things that actually have a little bit more control. You can control the volume, treble, bass, add reverb to channel one and two. You can also kick in their tone match, which allows you to actually dial in the channels to specific kinds of instruments. If you have a piano or a guitar or even a certain brand of microphone, you can actually tone match. And what they had done is kind of created some preset EQs that you could turn those on and use those during your performance. One of the major advantages to this new Bose line is how quick and easy the whole thing sets up. It literally takes a minute to put the whole thing together. You got the base, you put the two sticks on top of each other, you grab your sub and you connect it through their sub match cable, you plug it in and you're done. I mean, when I'm using this for weddings, it takes me less than a minute to set the whole thing up. It's unbelievable. And also tear down, which is great. You know, when the night's over, you wanna just get the hell out of there. And it's perfect because again, it just completely comes apart at the top, goes back into the bags, and boom, you're ready to go. Speaking of, one of the advantages that Bose has always had over other PA systems is they give you the fucking bags. I don't know why this is so difficult for other speakers to give this to you. Of course I know why, because it's an easy upsell. It's an extra 150, 200 bucks they can squeeze out of you. But I'm pretty sure that Bose built the bags into the price because these things aren't cheap. The magic of Bose, and I will use the word magic, is there's something that happens when these things are on and I don't know how they do it. You can literally stand right next to it like I am, like two feet away from it and it doesn't feel like you have a speaker blasting music in your face. You can literally walk around the room and hear the sound wherever you are and that's because of the 180 degree dispersion that they do. And because there's 32 speakers that go seven feet up, you're gonna get sound all the way down to the floor which might sound ridiculous. Like why do I need music two feet off the floor? I did a sound test with these versus my J-Mix 8s, which you can see a review right here after this one is done. And the one thing I noticed is that as I walked around with the J8 on, you know, as you walked more in front of it, obviously that's where the sound kind of comes in more directly. And then when I had the Bose 32 on, that's where I could literally walk around and still hear the music everywhere. But I could sit down and still hear the music clearly on the 32 which I started thinking like, you know, during dinner and cocktail hour when people might be sitting, it might be nice to have more music all over, not just at the top, but literally fill the whole room. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but fine, let's just fucking go there. And you've got these other column array speakers or line array, which Bose calls this a line array, by the way. So I'm just gonna call it what they call it. You really have to kind of be there on the dance floor. It's, it's there, the music is for right there. And it works great. I love my J8s. They really hit the dance floor and give me a great sound, nice and loud. The thing about the Bose, it's kind of like going underwater and being completely submerged in the music. It's just kind of like everywhere. No matter where you go, it's there. When I would walk around the dance floor, I'm like, I can feel this music everywhere. And the sub two, which is what I have, I'll talk about that in just a second, really, really thumps. And the bass isn't just 
thumping. It sounds like actual music coming out of the sub. So the sub two, if you're a DJ, I would highly suggest getting the sub two over the sub one. It is bigger and it is more expensive, but you're definitely gonna get more thump out of it. The back of it has lots of outputs and inputs. If you want to connect it with other speakers you have, you can do that. You can even turn it on its side. It has a way that you could screw in a pole and put another top on top of it. And you could use it with your system you already have. I like that there is a volume control on the back of the sub where you can kind of control how loud it is. I usually keep my sub at about 11 o'clock. You don't need a power cable either. Bose has their own proprietary cables called Submatch. Once you plug the Submatch into the sub, which is gray and it has matching colors, then you plug it into the L1 stick and it's, it's ready to go. You're ready to party. Big question most people are gonna ask is, is it loud enough? I've done about six events with this system so far. Half of the events, I've only you had to use one. And here's why. I would bring both of them with me and I'd show up at the venue, walk around, and the one venue, a couple of venues I was at, it just seemed like, you know, one of these is gonna be perfectly fine for the size of the room, how many people are here. And the one wedding that I did with a pretty medium sized room with about 110 people, one of them was plenty. In fact, I was told to turn down, which I love when that happens. I'd rather be told to turn down then can you please turn up? And then I've done some weddings where I've had both of them set up. And again, coverage was great, volume was great. And the deal is guys, like I've always said this, I'm not trying to melt faces on the dance floor. You actually kind of piss off venues sometimes if you go too loud. A lot of the places that I end up going to have neighbors or they're a barn and I'm like, you can't be too loud. I'm just saying, you don't want to hit 130 dBs at a wedding. It's just, it's too much for people. I think it'll clear the dance floor. So I'm usually around 100, 110, 115, maybe once we get down and dirty. That's kind of like my max SPL. And it's perfectly fine. People are having a great time. I have footage to that. Couples are happy, clients are happy, and the venue is happy. Now it's time for me to talk personally about what I think about these speakers. Number one, the way that they look. I am so impressed with how sleek and sexy these things look. And to be honest, I'm not lying. Every event that I have used these for, I have had a compliment come from either a guest, another vendor, the venue. People walk by these things and go, wow, is that your sound system? And look, am I paying for vanity? Absolutely. Why? Because I'm a DJ and I'm an egomaniac. I want you to like me. I want you to love me. Hit the like button, please. I'm a single op DJ, right? It's just me. I don't have anybody else. So I don't have to buy like 10 of these for my other DJs. If I ever went that route and hired more DJs, I'd probably reconsider all the shit I buy just because <laughs> I have to buy multiple of these. So on a budget standpoint, these are not good budget speakers. If you are a single op DJ out there and you want something that's gonna give you a little bit of an edge in how you look and how you sound, this is the way to go. I did a wedding on Saturday and it was their grand opening of this facility. And not only did they like how I ran things, but they just loved the look that I had. And I'm telling you guys, it sounds great, but don't take my word for it. Go to a guitar center, go to a local bow store, whatever you have, go somewhere and actually listen to them. And that's what I did. I went to the guitar center and I connected my iPhone to it and I just played some music and I blasted it. I wanted to know how does this thing sound? How does it feel in this kind of place? I walked around, I was super impressed. So yes, I am keeping these. This. Bose system is going to be my go-to PA now. If you stuck around all the way to the end, I'm gonna talk about how much these things cost. And yeah, they're expensive, okay? Here's my advice. If you wanna get these, don't put it on a credit card, save up, buy it in cash. It won't hurt as much if you can pay for it in full because you know, you get that monthly payment and you're shelling it out. You'd be like, what the fuck was I thinking? I can't believe I bought $6,000 worth of speakers. Pay for it all at once, rip the Band-Aid off, and then they're yours, and then it's done, all right? And maybe sell some other shit. I'm probably going to sell my J-Mix 8s. I probably am. And keep the EV30Ms for smaller gigs or whatever. I don't know, just as a backup system. Or I might reverse that, I'm not sure. But I am gonna sell one of those systems I haven't decided yet, but I'm definitely keeping these. And yes, it is expensive. And you might be thinking, is $6,000 worth two speakers? That's up to you. For me, it hurts, okay? That is a lot of work. I'll be honest with you guys, I packed them up. There was a point where I put them in boxes and I was like, fuck this, this is crazy. I can't believe I spent $6,000 on speakers. I packed them up, 
I was gonna take him back to GC. And then I decided to do one last test. So I pulled out my JMix 8s, I set those up, and I did a one-off. And that's where I mentioned earlier those things I noticed about how I could sit and I could feel it. How my wife was like, wow, that's just, it feels smooth. She used the word smooth. And then after I took it to a wedding and everybody's talking about how awesome they look, ah, the stroke the ego. So, breaking up the boxes, I'm gonna keep them. They're gonna be my system. Go ahead, leave in the comments any questions you guys have about these. I'd love to answer them. I'm, I'm a fan. I will tell you, I am a fan, but I, I will say this, get two, and here's why. There could be a situation where you've got one and it's just not starting up or it just won't work and now you've got no PA system to run your event. Having two is nice because let's say you need a, another, a remote speaker. You know, you can have coverage on one side and you use the other one to fill the back room for speeches, for cocktail dinner, all that good stuff. You're always gonna wanna have two no matter what, just as a backup and as a fill. And then honestly, it just gives you a little bit more volume. So. I know that with these, I'll probably have to spread them out a little bit more. You don't want to have them sitting right next to each other with the 180. But that's what I do anyways, because it looks better. So fuck that. <laughs> I know, like, if you see my videos and you see my speakers next to my DJ booth, you're like, Rrr. you're going to be canceling out the sound, Aaron. Like, oh, that's fine. I don't give a fuck. I like the way it looks, and that's what I'm going to do. Thanks for watching, everybody. It means so much. If you like this and you like me, then you know what to do and just do that shit.